Helping now, the country is watching as the investigation over an, an assassination attempt on Donald Trump continues. Coming up, details on the shocking moments before and after the shooting. Plus, the GOP is anxiously waiting to solidify their presidential nominee. Just ahead, the security measures being taken to keep people protected amid safety concerns. And also, details on the newest decision involving Trump's classified documents case. As THB 11 at noon starts now. We're topping us off nationwide response to the assassination attempt on former President Donald Trump continues. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us. I'm Journey Taylor. The accused gunman is dead and some questions slowly being met with answers as bullets went flying into a crowd during a Trump rally on Saturday. Here's what we can confirm right now. Secret Service shot and killed 20 year old Thomas Matthew Crooks moments after the initial shooting. Police found an illegal AR style rifle near his deceased body and later discovered bomb materials in his home and vehicle. We just learned Crooks purchased 50 rounds of ammunition at a gun store just hours before his attack. Now, as reactions pour in, both presidential hopefuls are speaking out with a similar message. Trump sharing to his truth social platform just one day after his own life was at risk, acknowledging the two victims injured and the one person that died. President Biden using his time to call on the country to make a more peaceful approach. We can't allow this violence to be normalized. You know, the political record in this country has gotten very heated. It's time to cool it down. Today, we know the person killed is 50-year-old Corey Comprador, who served as a fire chief in Pennsylvania. The other two people shot are David Dutch and James Copenhaver, both in stable condition. Now, this all comes as we reach a major key point in the race for the presidential nomination. The campaign trail is experiencing a major shift as we're just hours away from the Republican National Convention. CBS brings you the very latest on new security measures amid high tensions. Former President Trump gave his now signature fist pump as he arrived in Milwaukee Sunday night for the Republican National Convention. It's the same fist pump he gave in the aftermath of Saturday's assassination attempt at his Pennsylvania rally. The former president told the Washington Examiner he looked away from the crowd at the last second, and that is what saved his life. President Trump is waking up this morning doing very well, uh, feels very fortunate to be alive, and as he said, it's only by the grace of God that he's even still with us. Trump also said he's completely rewritten his convention speech following the shooting. The message that President Trump is coming out of this is very simple. We have to unite America. We have to unite the country. President Biden delivered a similar message in an Oval Office address Sunday night. You know, the political record in this country has gotten very heated. It's time to cool it down. We all have a responsibility to do that. Trump says he will announce his vice presidential pick today, which is said to be down to three choices. CBS News was outside the home of Ohio Senator J.D. Vance as government vehicles took him to the airport Monday morning. Former President Trump is expected to take the stage later this evening after a roll call of delegates officially makes him the Republican presidential nominee. Some delegates here also have security on their minds. With the security at the convention, I'm fully reliant on other people to keep me safe. I can't have my own firearm here with me. The Secret Service says its convention security plan has been in the works for 18 months and it's prepared for any event. Sabrina Franza, CBS News, Milwaukee. It was a hot and humid weekend here in central Arkansas and the heat continues to build out there for the start of the new work week. Temperatures right now, a lot of locations have already topped out into the low 90s. 92 is the number in Little Rock, 92 in Searcy, 90 in Arkansas. Lots of sun. We have reached that convective temperature, so we have these puffy clouds billowing up. But with the humidity, it feels like 106 right now in Little Rock. Feels like 104 in Stuttgart. Feels like 104 in Arkadelphia. Feels like 107 in Searcy. So we had that heat advisory in effect all the way through this evening, and that's because the heat index or the feels like number could top out at 110. Really, no chance of a cooling shower or storm in the forecast out there today. There could be a stray shower somewhere in Arkansas. One or two of you may get lucky, but the rest of the state will stay on the dry side. Lows tonight will drop down into, I think, pretty much 
the upper 70s to right around 80 degrees. And tomorrow, the heat sticks around once again. But we do have some changes that you're going to like as we go into the rest of the work week. I'll have more on those changes coming up. All right, Nathan, thank you. Just into the newsroom moments ago, Donald Trump will no longer face charges in the classified documents case. A federal judge appointed by Trump just threw out the charges for concerns over the appointment of special counsel Jack Smith. The Trump quickly took to Truth Social, calling the dismissal a first step in getting out of other any other charges. Well, this afternoon, we know electronic signatures will not be allowed for use on voter forms this election season. We've been following this controversial issue since the very start. The board just decided to require only physical signatures this upcoming election season. Now, the decision met with plenty of pushback from potential voters. Our team is there and working to bring you the very latest tonight. Now, from one controversy to another, pro-choice activists are sounding off after the proposed abortion amendment was disqualified from being considered for November's ballot. Those frustrations put on public display this weekend as people gathered outside the Capitol days after the Arkansas Secretary of State rejected the abortion proposal for lack of documentation. The group, the group behind the amendment is Arkansans for Limited Government. They fired back on that choice, calling it unfair. Members on the other side of the topic are backing the Secretary of State's office and say their actions align with state law. The chants about counting signatures and so forth really are missing the point because if you do not follow the law when you submit your signatures, then they're not going to be counted. As for the two sides remain severely decided, right now the Secretary of State office is not going back on that ruling. As we began the week, people in one neighborhood hit hardest during the March 31st tornado are being asked to speed up their cleanup process. Despite significant progress being made along the road to recovery, some people in Warner Valley are still working to get back on their feet. We are hitting more speed bumps because of signs signs there. It's a warning directly from the city of Little Rock encouraging folks to clean up any leftover storm damage. Some are just now literally a year and a half later seeing good money from insurance companies so they can get started on whatever they're going to do. Some of them had issues with contractors coming in, doing good work or not going to do work, disappearing. While some people see it as a burden, Little Rock shares in part, quote, the notices issued recently are another effort to ensure property owners continue to make progress with cleanup and code, code compliance, end quote. Today, one organization is encouraging you to give you your two cents for the future of Central Arkansas Library System, which you say could help shape your changes to cows starting today. The survey can be found online at the website there on your screen. It's cows.org slash strategic plan. It only take about 10 minutes and will close on August 5th. This afternoon, we're learning Alec Baldwin is back at home and will avoid jail time after a New Mexico judge dismissed his charges. Baldwin shown in court full of tears as the judge gave down her decision. His team accused the prosecution of holding on to key evidence that would have favored Baldwin. The judge agreed, called out prosecutors for misconduct and ruled to drop Baldwin's involuntary manslaughter charge. New this hour, we've learned a woman from Missouri could appear in court after being accused of killing an Arkansas woman and her unborn child. We're still waiting to see if and when she will make an appearance. Her husband, Jamie Waterman, is also being charged with accessory for his involvement after the kidnapping. Both will stand federal trial in October. Well, we've seen an uptick in violence in recent days, and one group in Pine Bluff is hoping to unite the community by hosting an event meant to provide people with a little bit of comfort. The Ministerial Alliance is inviting you to come out to the historic Elm Grove Baptist Church during a much needed time of healing. It's happening as we speak, and those details coming to you tonight at 5 and 6. 
If you're among the people with a passport, you've probably thought about if it has an expiration date. We verify coming up at 1218. And it's going to get a little spicy out there with the heat, but nothing we're not used to here in Arkansas by July standards. Temperatures climbing up into the mid to upper 90s, but it's going to feel like 105 to 110. Heat relief is on the way, and it will be significant. I'll let you know when it arrives coming up.